I'm Billy S, welcome back to the channel. Today we're overcoming the trials and tribulations laid out before us as I rank the courses from World 3, Shining Falls, of Super Mario Bros. Wonder. This is the third part in a full series of Mario Wonder course rankings, so if you want to see the previous entries, click the first link in the description for a playlist. I was immediately intrigued by Shining Falls, given its interesting layout and aesthetic design. I thought it might actually be the desert level with all those floating pyramids, but instead we got a series of trials by the Master Poplin, in what was more of an East Asian-inspired series of forests and temples. It certainly was refreshing to not have Bowser Jr. breathing down our necks, but the lack of a boss battle to end the world and a shorter amount of stages left me wanting a little bit more. Now, a reminder that I am ranking these courses from the perspective of a very casual 2D Mario fan. The last game I really enjoyed was New Super Mario Bros. for the DS. Yup. And also, I have not played past World 3 as of scripting this video, as I don't want future worlds to cause bias towards my rankings for World 3. So without further ado, all 12 courses in World 3 of Super Mario Bros. Wonder ranked. And let me know your favorite World 3 Shining Falls course down below. At the bottom of the barrel, it should come as no surprise that it's the break time stage Unreachable Treasure. It takes the most overused hidden block trait of 2D Mario and makes a minuscule stage out of it. I was expecting a puzzle where you'd have to jump around creating a path to the treasure that would take a minute or two to figure out. Instead, it's the classic two hidden blocks with one hidden block above it, and then bam, you're done over in a flash. When future break time levels in this zone actually show you can have a decent challenge to them, this one feels unreasonably lazy. Next up, missing out on the top 10, which is rather tragic when there's only 12 courses, is the break time stage Watery Wonder Tokens. In this, you ride a lowering water level, collecting flower coins as you progress so you can summon the Wonder Seed at the bottom. I enjoyed collecting the coins as the water lowered, and the fact it is possible to miss one of the main collectibles is a nice bit of fun so you're not fully disengaged with what's on screen. That brief sense of danger is what really gets me going on courses I enjoy, and is what keeps it from the bottom spot on my list. At number 10, we have the break time stage, Timer Switch Climb. Now these are the type of break time stages I really enjoy. Ones that really let you engage with a small mechanic for a minute or two and just let you have fun. While I prefer the horizontal variation coming up later in the list, I think this vertical take on the timer switch platforms is a good time. You won't be challenged by it, but going around collecting all the floating flowers for extra coins is addictive. Especially given the course you had to do to unlock this one. At number 9, we have the Sugar Star Trial Across the Night Sky. And I don't think anybody will be shocked I'm ranking this low, for the sheer fact that once you pick up the Wonder Flower, you're basically given free reign to complete the course at your leisure. This is because the Wonder Effect is a rain of invincibility stars, making it so you won't ever be taking damage as you platform as fast as you can to the flagpole. Of course, you could attempt this course without collecting the Wonder Flower, and you might get more of a challenge out of it, but that's obviously not the intended way from the developers. I just think for a trial that comes later in the world, it's way easier than any of the other courses on the lower level of Shining Falls, and feels incredibly misplaced. I feel bad for the Sugar Star enemies, their first appearance is them taking a massive L. The only danger this course poses is making sure you collect another invincibility star before the effect runs out. You do have to be ever so slightly careful, and not what I did, and accidentally fall to my death while getting complacent. But given there's only six regular sized courses in this world, it felt a bit cheap that this one was more of a free gimme force. Don't be afraid to lean into the difficulty a little bit, Nintendo. And number eight, we have the Search Party course, An Empty Park. Search Party courses ask the player to find five flower coins to summon the Wonder Seed, and are best played with online functionality. This is because these stages are designed for cooperation, allowing you to see how other players are progressing, and often including blocks that can only be seen by specific characters. That being said, an empty park feels a bit too vague for my liking. The first portion of the level goes about as smooth as you'd expect, but I found myself stuck trying to figure out how to activate the final rain cloud near the end for a few minutes. 
I could even see another player swimming there, so I knew it was a thing. I just didn't know how to make it appear. Perhaps that's the joy of co-op, though. I just prefer levels that have a lot of parts to them over the gimmick of, ooh, this level is invisible, figure out where the switch is. Next up on our list, we have the Crouch High Jump One Badge Challenge. And I had a lot of fun with this one. The crouching high jump feels really satisfying to use, getting you a ton of upwards momentum, and I'd love to see what speedrunners could do with it in the rest of the movement-based badges. The jumps you had to do, bouncing off the tall enemies to reach the flower coins, it felt really well designed, I don't know. I just found myself vibing with this course a ton. My only downside was that I had to redo the challenge twice, once because on my first attempt I screwed up the flagpole and didn't get the last flower coin, and then on my second attempt I got the flower coin but accidentally slipped the analog stick to the left and didn't hit the flagpole's tip. Very embarrassing from my part. And number six, we have the final break time stage and the last of the minor courses, Timer Switch Dash. This is a horizontal version of the previous timer switch break time stage, and I think it works far better. Going from left to right gives you more of an opportunity to create some nice, mazy movement, and the addition of following the flower bulb through the maze from position to position gave me something to focus on, even if the reward was ultimately just a bunch of coins. I like the last segment where you have to reveal the path to the Wonder Seed by hitting the question mark blocks, just a really solid break time stage that gave me something to do without feeling dull. And I realise that's an incredibly low bar to clear, but hey, let's focus on the positives. If I can just take a brief moment of your time, my new channel goal is to reach 20,000 subscribers by summer of 2024. And you guys can help. Just look at how many of you aren't subscribed so far. Be sure to parry that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all my latest videos. Back to the video. It's just the main courses left now, and next up is the Sharp Trial, Launch to Victory. Here you ride a bamboo shoot with a hoppy cat inside and use it as a projectile to complete the level. I think the concept here is really neat, and the level length was just right so it didn't overstay its welcome. My issue is that to create this level, they had to spam metallic spikes all around the player, and I guess I just prefer stages that look a bit more natural in their presentation. This was something straight out of a custom Mario Maker stage, you can't tell me otherwise. I love the mechanic of hitting other enemies so their death animation knocks into the large flower coins you have to collect. I have no idea why they wanted me to be an elephant in this stage though, that power-up was never really tied into the gameplay. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Wonder Flower effect. Once you collect it, you become a hoppy cat version of yourself, and you're able to launch upwards with insane height. The music changes to this really catchy bop that I definitely want to find and use as background music at some point. You crash through obstacles, boost into the sky, and once you collect the Wonder Seed, you have a nice sequence of you falling back to Earth with your flower friend. But only one of you survives. At number four, we have the Hoppy Cat Trial, Hop Hoppin' Away! This was the first trial I challenged in World 3, and I'll straight up admit, I think it's the hardest course by far. Not because of any insane platforming or Kaizo level difficulty, no, it's just the hoppy cats themselves that bring the challenge. These creatures jump when you do, mimicking your actions, which means it's very difficult to speed your way through this stage, as when you jump, you'll often be jumping right into a hoppy cat. It promotes a very slow playstyle, and I've learned that for me, I'm kind of more of a mid-tempo guy. Not too fast, not too slow, but here I had to play really slow because I kept taking damage I could have avoided. I think the placements of the hoppy cats are brilliant, extremely well designed, especially with how they can hop onto platforms, and you have to actively use that mechanic to avoid them. And then the wonder effect brings the hoppy cats to super-sized proportions, forcing you to climb higher into the stage while making the hoppy cats break through the environment itself to give you a path of progression. It's a lot to keep track of, and I never truly felt safe in this level. Like, every time I jumped, I'd just assume a hoppy cat was going to spawn in from the void and instant kill me. I can respect a totally well-designed level, even if it isn't quite for me, and that's why it lands at the number four spot. Love the aesthetics and design, though, with the jeweled reds and faded blues. In fact, the aesthetics for just about every course in this world are top-notch, so up my alley. 
Taking today's bronze medal, we have the final trial, Zip Track Dash. And I don't have any negatives to throw its way beyond thinking it's a bit of an easy final trial. Here you ride along the zip tracks, jumping over obstacles, following coin trails, and collecting the flower coins. But this stage has a secret, revealed before you even try the course. There's a secret exit, and the only way to actually complete the stage is to find it. As if you take the normal course, you can collect all three flower coins, but you'll find a flagpole and some empty land. A classic course clear question mark moment? That being said, the actual way to find the real exit is pretty straightforward, because you get to the exit via the Wonder Flower effect. Once again, you're turned into a hoppy cat, and once again, you're launching yourself up through space as you ride along grind rails, wondering whether you're on the right track or not. Just jump when the coin trail tells you to, and you'll be golden. Plus, any excuse to be a hoppy cat is a good excuse. The final trial once again feels like a gimme, but the way the zip tracks are used with some of them moving, rotating, going in vertical and horizontal directions, it just works extremely well and feels super satisfying to complete. Totally deserving of a top 3 finish. Our silver medalist today is the Midway Trial Hop To It, found at the aforementioned midway point between the first half the world and the second half. Here you're immediately introduced to your objective, a hoppy cat with a wonder aura that launches itself away as you get close. Your goal is to vertically climb your way to said hoppy cat and ultimately knock it out so you can claim the wonder flower for yourself, and that is the first half of the level. Avoiding other hoppy cats and these weird ninja bamboo looking enemies who I just think are these world's goombas, I didn't see them do anything too crazy. The first flower coin is a bit of a throwaway, but the second and the third make up for it. The second being in its own challenge room where you get a hoppy cat to hit a switch to reveal the floor, only for you to get ambushed by more hoppy cats on the return trip. I died here, but because flower coins stay with you once you've collected them, I didn't have to redo the room. It feels like I cheated the system a bit, but you know what? We'll live. The third flower coin involves you doing a momentum jump while ensuring hoppy cats don't destroy your platforms from below. It's good fun. But this level is the one that introduces the Hoppy Cat Wonder effect, and thus it gets precedent over the other two. Because nothing is more exciting than that first time you launch yourself into space, flying upwards as a Hoppy Cat without a care in the world. You launch through blocks, demolish enemies, all to reach that Wonder Seed at the top. Fireworks going off in the background, you're providing a show. And once the effect ends and you land back down, a pair of flowers sit there complimenting the display. Gotta say, I ship Talking Flower A and Talking Flower B. Good stuff. Just a really solid level that leans into the style of Shining Falls, and introduces one of my favourite wonder effects in the game. My favourite course from World 3 though goes to the Anglefish Trial. Ready? Aim? Fly! This level doesn't really focus on gimmicks at all, instead giving you a standard level to traverse that's more defined by two enemy types. First are the snails you've likely seen in a few worlds up to this point, and here their shells are actually utilised to break certain blocks, and also access and collect one of the later flower coins in the level. It's nothing more complex than Koopa shell throwing but with a larger shell, but I appreciate it all the same. The real stars of the show here though are the angle fishes. These pointy triangular fishies swim through the water, and once they lock onto the player, they prepare to fire. Unlike Cheap Cheeps from past games, the anglefish can come at you from any angle they please, and they have varying heights they can launch upwards, making them a little bit more dangerous than your average Mario fish. I really appreciate this as every time they were on screen I had to keep on my toes, and I definitely fell victim to their attacks more than once. I especially love this flower coin where you have to navigate all these low platforms back and forth while the anglefish attempt to spear you. The Wonder Flower effect for this stage, while similar in concept to the Hoppy Cats, plays out a little differently. Your goal is still to go high up into the sky, but instead of bouncing as a Hoppy Cat, you're instead bouncing up on the Anglefish as they shoot up from the bottom and sides of the screen. It requires a bit of skill to actually pull off, and if you're not very skilled at bouncing off enemies, you will find yourself dying once or twice like I actually did. I really appreciate that the Wonder Flower segments aren't always just a free bit of fun, and can sometimes make the stages harder, or at least provide a bit of a challenge. All of this combined with a gorgeous aesthetic. Those constant pools of water below the stage just give such a serene vibe, I can't help but love it. So congrats to the Anglefish Trial! 
your My World 3 top course. And that's another video over and done with. Next time, we're moving on to the Sunbaked Desert. And you'll find out when that releases if you parry that subscribe button and stay up to date on all my future videos. My socials are on screen now. Feel free to follow where you feel comfortable. I recommend my Twitter, my Blue Sky, or my Discord, whichever is most comfortable for you. A massive shout out to my patrons over on Patreon for supporting me for another month. You guys are amazing. And I will see you next time for another video. Adios.